In this video, we'll discuss Miller-Fisher syndrome. Few important exam questions before the topic, and we'll get the answers after we have done the topic. First question is: What type of antibody Miller-Fisher syndrome has? Number two: Why does it affects extraocular muscles? And number three: Why full recovery occurs in demyelinating Guillain-Barré syndrome? Let's discuss the Miller-Fisher syndrome. It's a variant or subtype of demyelinating Guillain-Barré syndrome. Miller-Fisher syndrome resembles AIDP, acute inflammatory demyelinating polyneuropathy, but there is no weakness in Miller-Fisher syndrome and there is rapidly evolving ataxia and areflexia of the limbs. Ophthalmoplegia often occurs with pupillary paralysis. So in Miller-Fisher syndrome there is no weakness, there is ataxia, areflexia and ophthalmoplegia with pupillary paralysis. Extraocular muscles are especially involved in Miller-Fisher syndrome. Miller-Fisher syndrome is strongly associated with anti-gangliocide antibody GQ1B. GQ1B antibodies are found in more than 90% of patients with Miller-Fisher syndrome. Why does it affect extraocular muscles? The answer is because extraocular nerves are rich in GQ1B gangliocytes. Now answers to the questions. Question number one. What type of antibody Miller-Fisher syndrome has? Anti-gangliocide antibody GQ1B. Question number two, why does it affect extraocular muscle? Answer is because extraocular nerves are rich in GQ1B gangliocytes. An antibody to GQ1B attack GQ1B gangliocytes in the extraocular muscles. Number three, why full recovery occurs in demyelinating Guillain-Barre syndrome? and not in axonal type. In demyelinating type there is full recovery due to remyelination. Why? Because axonal connection remains intact. So recovery can take place as remyelination occurs.